It's Pam from the Shoots with Roots program at Milner Gardens. I'm not at Milner Gardens today, obviously. I'm at home on Protection Island, and this is another virtual field trip. For today's field trip, we're gonna go, well, you can already see where we are. We're at the beach. Now, for people, going to the beach is often a way that we relax being near the ocean, in the sunshine. It's a really great way to relieve stress and get in contact with nature. But for the animals who actually live here, this can be a pretty stressful place. When the tide comes up and all these rocks are covered, the crabs and barnacles and things that live under those rocks can come out from their rocks and gather food and swim around. But when the tide goes out, all of a sudden, they can't breathe. They breathe with gills, so they need that water, and uh, it's awfully hard to find food if you can't swim around for some of these animals. So we're gonna go take a look under some of these rocks and see how some of these beach creatures keep themselves safe. I'm down lower in the intertidal zone now. The camera's shaking because I'm holding it myself, and I'm gonna flip over one of these rocks to see what lives underneath but something strange seems to be going on. Ha! Huh. What are you doing here? I'm a little concerned about this flipping over rocks business. Huh. Uh, why? Why are you worried? Those are our homes. Those are where we feel safe. You flip it over, we think you're some kind of crazy raccoon coming to eat us. Oh, maybe I shouldn't flip it over then. Oh no, it's okay, go ahead. But just promise to stick it back where you found it when you're done, okay? Uh, yeah, okay, I can do that. Thanks, Mr. Octopus. Now, if you like to flip over rocks at the beach before I do this, I'm gonna give you some safety tips to keep yourself safe. First of all, don't flip over a rock that's bigger than your head. Second of all, use both your hands when you flip it over if you can. And uh, just like that octopus asked, make sure you put it back when you're finished because these rocks are animals' homes. So here goes, let's find out what's under Neath. Oh, you guys, there's so much cool stuff. Right there, we've got a purple ochre sea star. These creatures keep themselves safe by sticking onto the rocks, and uh, the other way they keep themselves safe is they have these little tiny. Um, they're almost like teeth on the top of their body that stop seaweed and things from attaching to them. And when we're talking about creatures who stay put and cling on to rocks, right here is one of my favorite intertidal creatures. This guy's a northern clingfish. He's a fish, but he sticks right onto the rocks. That's where he's got his name. If we were to flip him over, well, you would see that his pectoral fins are specially shaped to turn into like a suction cup to keep him from moving around. Oh, there he goes, wiggling about. He's probably looking for safety. Oh, look at that. He went into the little bit of water right there that the sea star is holding so that he could probably continue to breathe. Over here are some creatures called aggregating anem anemones. That's a hard word to say. These little creatures, when the water comes up, will put their tentacles out and use their sticky tentacles, their sticky, to catch all sorts of creatures floating by. But when the tide goes out to keep them safe from drying up, they curl into themselves, pull those tentacles in. And if I poke them, you can see they use that curling up motion to keep themselves safe too. Let's see, who else do we have under here? Oh, look, it's a coin on. Where'd he go? Let's see, right there. You see that little guy? This little creature? Here he is. This little guy is called an isopod. They're kind of like the wood bugs of the sea. And the reason I called them cling ons is because they have tiny hooked feet that you probably can't see too well that help them cling on. Oh, look at that! To my thumb or the seaweed or other things that they uh, are hiding under. We've got some more sea stars, another sea anemone, and there's a little periwinkle.
Winkle right here. That's pretty cool. And oh my gosh, guys, look at this, this empty oyster shell. It just moved. What's happening? Someone underneath there? Sure enough, look at that little guy. There's a little green shore crab. These guys are called green shore crabs, or their other name is hairy shore crab, because if you look at their legs, they have little hairs on them. And if you look really closely, well, you can see one of the ways these crabs keep themselves safe is by using their, uh, their pinchers. But mostly they use those pinchers actually for eating. Now, all of these creatures are hiding under this rock to protect themselves when the tide goes out. They all need water to breathe because they breathe with gills. And when this hot sun is on them, some of these creatures are gonna get awfully hot and maybe dry up too. So I'm gonna flip the rock back to help keep these guys in their safe home. I flipped over another rock and I've discovered two more creatures. This one on the right, the big fluffy one, is a nudibranch. I think this kind of nudibranch is called a sea hare. I would actually have to look that up, or you guys can go ahead and Google it for me. And those little creatures next to him are limpets. The limpets keep themselves safe by uh, having these shells that not only protect them from predators like little helmets, but actually they can pull those um, shells down tight, tight to the rock when the tide goes out, trap water inside, and that helps make sure they can breathe. And you can see that top limit limpet, he's trying to keep himself safe by hiding under the nudibranch. Now when I had a look at this rock, I realized that it's not just themselves that these nudibranchs, there's a few more over here, are trying to keep safe. It's their eggs. There are some eggs on the bottom of this rock. So I'm going to put this back right away because I definitely don't want to disturb that. Bye guys. There were a lot of cool things hiding under those rocks, weren't there? I think my favorite was the nudibranch because I haven't seen one of those in a while and I wasn't really expecting to find that today. The clingfish is one of my other favorites as well. And you know, one of my favorite things about exploring nature is that when you observe animals and look at how they keep themselves safe and how they live their lives, sometimes there's advice in there for you about how to, you know, calm down and not be too stressed out yourself. Like for instance, I think it's kind of inspirational how all those creatures under the rocks are able to get along and be patient and stay underneath those rocks until the tide comes up and it's safe to go out again. I also think it's pretty smart of those raccoons that the octopus was worried about, if you remember that part. When they catch their food, they always take it down to the shoreline and they rinse it off to make sure that they're not eating anything they shouldn't. And you know, the other thing that I think is kind of good is that these creatures that are stuck under the rocks, a lot of them, when the tide comes up, they leave the rock and they go take breaks from their rock to go forage for food and, uh, you know, maybe get a little break from all the other creatures that are under there. So here's this week's challenge. I want you guys to get to know an animal in your yard, maybe in your house, maybe it's your cat or dog. Watch what it does, think about how it keeps itself safe, and wonder, is there any advice that animal could give you or your family? You're gonna draw a picture of that animal, try and make it better than mine, make it big and colorful, add lots of details, and uh, talk about how that animal keeps itself safe. So that's your challenge, a safety poster starring your favorite animal. Uh, so, Everybody out there, I hope you enjoyed this week's field trip. Uh, be safe, be kind, and I'll see you in a week. Bye.